folks who have a short little informational video kind of on theoretical probability, like entry-level probability. Uh, theoretical probability is going to be the comparison of um, the number of things that you want to occur, so the number of successes, uh, compared to the total number of everything that could happen. So we'll go through a couple of examples, um, and then we'll also talk about sample space too. So let's say we want to calculate the theoretical probability of these two situations, and then we have another situation on the next screen as well. Uh, rolling a five on a six-sided die. All right, so I'm thinking about a six-sided die, and I want to try to create my sample space here. So my sample space is everything that could happen if I were to roll a single six-sided die. Well, we know on a single six-sided die we have uh, six sides, and there is a unique number or different number on each one of those sides. So from here, I would then take a look at, well, how many total items do I actually have? So how many total different things could occur if I was rolling a six-sided die? Well, I have six different things, six different items kind of in my sample space. If I want to find the probability that I roll a five, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, well, how many total things could happen. Well, that's where my six items comes from. Then of those six items, I take a look at my sample space and I find out how many things would actually give me the result that I'm looking for. Well, if I roll a five, there's only one five in the list, so that one item represents my success. So the probability of rolling a five is going to be one out of six. Well, let's take a look at flipping a coin here. Flipping a coin, sample space, you really only have two things that could happen. So we know that on one side is a head, and the other side is a tail. I'm going to go through the exact same process here. This represents everything that could happen. So there's two things that could happen. And then if I want to find the probability of getting a head, well, total number of things that could happen is two. Of those two things, look back at my list, there is one head in the list. So there's one success out of two possibilities. All right, let's take a look at one that maybe has a little bit more going on. So we're rolling two six-sided dice this time. So, uh, and I'm looking for some sort of combination that's happening between them. Well, it looks like I'm trying to get the sum of those two. So what I want to do is I want to actually create some sort of organizational tool. So you could go through and create a systematic list of your sample space, which is what we did on the previous two questions. Um, you could draw a visual for yourself, maybe try to organize your thoughts a little bit. I'm a big fan of creating a table for this. So I know that I'm going to have uh, two dice. So I know I'm going to have die number one. I'll go ahead and put this across the top here. And then for die number one, I know that there are a couple of different things that could happen. So just look at it on the previous one. I know I could get a one or a two, three four, five, or six. And then I have die number two. Well, die number two, because I want to get these involved with each other, I'm going to go ahead and put die number two's information down the side. So this will be die number two. But you have the same scenario. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are all the things that could happen if you roll the die. Now from here, I want to go ahead and try to create some sort of a table that allows me to keep this organized. So if I create some sort of a table, looks like we're going to chop it off a little bit. That's okay. Got the right idea. I want to think about all the different sums that I could get here. So I'm just trying to organize this a little bit. And your model doesn't have to look perfect. It's just to try to help you keep your stuff organized. That's all. So what we're going to do is we're creating this. We're going to go through and we're going to fill in all the sums. Well, remember that a sum is when you add two things together. So as I go through, I'm just going to start adding the numbers. So one and one gives me a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep filling in my table to try to create some sort of a visual for my sample space. With our completed sample space or visual to help us with that, uh, we can now go through and try to answer the question. So first thing I'd probably do is figure out how many total sums I'm dealing with. 
So if I count all of these boxes, I'm going to end up with 36 total boxes. So my uh, total here, so off to the side in blue, I know I've got 36 total items. Now, out of those 36 total items, so out of all of here, I want to find a sum that is less than, so smaller, or equal to 8. Okay, so equal to 8 is a success. So I'm going to find all of my 8s in here. It's kind of going to be the little dividing spot. And then anything less than that as well. So I'm going to go through and circle everything that represents all of my successes because every single one of these is going to satisfy the probability that I'm looking for. Once I figure out how many successes I have, this is going to be the top of my fraction. So if I go through and I can count up all of these boxes, it looks like we're going to end up with, you know, I think there's going to be 26 of them. Let's make sure. Yeah, I think so. There's 26 boxes here. So the probability of getting what we're looking for, the sum is less than or equal to uh, 8, is going to be 26 out of 36.